Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video on my channel. In this video I would like to talk about the iOptron Skyguard Pro. So I've been using this mount multiple times so far and I even brought that one with me to La Palma. And in this video I would like to talk about this tracking mount. Before introducing this tracking mount I would like to mention that this video is not sponsored and not being paid for it and all products shown in this video were purchased by myself. But now let's get started. So in this video I would like to talk about the iOptron Skyguard Pro. So when starting into the hobby of astrophotography, you need a tracking mount. So at least if you're planning to do deep sky astrophotography. So for sure you can do deep sky astrophotography without a tracking mount as well, but then your exposure time needs to be very short. Therefore, in astrophotography, it's very important to use a tracking mount. And there are different tracking mounts on the market. So there are those star trackers and there are those bigger tracking mounts, such as the HEQ5 Pro GoTo mount, which is the bigger mount that I'm using for deep sky astrophotography. But this tracking mount is in the category of the star trackers. So these star trackers are very portable star trackers, so they are not that heavy. So therefore, these star trackers are great if you're planning to get started into the hobby of astrophotography. So there are different reasons why these star trackers are very suitable if you're planning to get started into the hobby of astrophotography. So on the one hand, these star trackers are relatively affordable, so they are not that expensive compared to these very heavy star trackers. And on the other side, these star trackers are very portable, which makes them very good if you're planning to get started into the hobby of astrophotography. But even professional astrophotographers are using these star trackers for astrophotography, for example, for capturing amazing images of the Milky Way. But this video is about the iOptron Skyguard Pro. So now I would like to talk a bit about the features of this tracking mount. First of all, if you're planning to buy this star tracker for astrophotography, it's important that you're using a good tripod for astrophotography that has a lot of stability. So in the beginning I made that mistake unfortunately, so on La Palma I've used this tripod and it was a bit windy and therefore I had to delete multiple images. But I even own um, the original tripod for this star tracker, which is this one, and this one is definitely better because it has more stability and with that one you can even capture images if it's quite windy. So usually I'm using this tripod because it's just simply better. So with this tripod it works quite good. But now let's talk about the um, the star tracker itself. So first of all I would like to start with this piece. So this star tracker has a built-in polar scope. And that is very important because later we have to align this uh, star tracker to Polaris which is the North Star. So therefore we have to look through this polar scope later on and in order to be able to align this star tracker to uh, Polaris we have to align the star tracker and therefore we can use uh, this base here so we can I'd like to show you that uh, just by moving this screw you can uh, move this star tracker depending on your location. So as you can see I can select uh, or can move the entire star tracker by simply moving the screw. So this is the very first one and with these two screws you can move the entire star tracker to the left and to the right which helps you to align Polaris in the polar scope in the end. So that's about aligning this scope, this star tracker to Polaris. So just to show you that, so here at the back you can see um, the polar scope, you can just remove this adapter and then you can simply look through this polar scope. So at the front there's another adapter, another, another piece, this one, so you have to remove both and then you can simply look through the polar scope and then you can see Polaris if your star tracker is aligned to Polaris. So that's very important and especially in the beginning it can be quite challenging aligning your star tracker to Polaris but after practicing multiple times it's relatively easy and especially when using a shorter focal length it's quite easy to do the pole alignment process because um, it's easier for you to achieve round stars in the end. So now let's talk about the different buttons that you can select at the back. So there is one button right there where you can just turn on and turn off the entire tracking mount. When turning on the tracking mount, your tracking mount will uh, start tracking the night sky. So very, very easy in the end. Right at the back you have different ports. So you have uh, a guiding port here as well, so you can attach a guide scope as well to your system, which allows you to um, improve the tracking, which helps you to use longer exposure times, so that's definitely great. Right next to it you have the, um, the USB power port, where you can uh, judge the battery of this star tracker. So um, there are multiple star trackers on the market, but 
this one has a built-in battery, which is great. So you can simply recharge the battery, hit the bag, and you can even uh, attach a power bank to this uh, star tracker, which means that you can charge this star tracker while capturing images of a night sky, which means that you can capture multiple nights with this star tracker. I've tested this star tracker, and you can definitely capture uh, images multiple nights, so two nights, without uh, charging the batteries of this one. So definitely, you do not have to charge the batteries every night you plan to capture the night sky. So much said about the battery. Right on the top, you have three different buttons. So you, you can, for example, select different modes with this star tracker. So you can select between a solar, a lunar, half speed, normal speed, so the speed for the stars. Um, so these are the different modes that you can use. So if you plan to capture uh, images of the moon, you can use the lunar mode. So you can select between these different modes depending on the project you would like to do. You can select the different modes with the button in the middle. So by, by simply pressing on this button, you can select the mode you would like to use for your project. Furthermore, you can just turn on the light for the polar scope, which makes it easier for you to find Polaris and night sky through the scope. Furthermore, you have these two buttons right there. So when turning on the mount and when pressing on this button, you can hear the motors of this Star Trek are moving. So. I really hope that you can hear it. And then on the other side, um, it's moving. That is quite helpful when planning to align a deep scale object in your image. So this star tracker um, does not have a, um, a go-to function. Therefore, you have to align this star tracker manually. And when um, centering the object in your framing, you can just push these buttons in order to center the object in your center or just in order to achieve the perfect framing that you would like to achieve. So much said about all of these different modes and the buttons. And now let's turn the star tracker to the side. So in order to be able to show you how to attach a camera, for example, to this star tracker. So when using, when moving this ring here, you can um, move this entire piece here. And when your object is centered, you can just simply move this ring in order to secure the entire star tracker. Now I would like to talk about how to attach a camera to this star tracker, for example. So therefore you need um, a ball head. Then when planning to attach um, this ball head to your star tracker, you need a second adapter that comes with this star tracker. So therefore you have to simply remove um, this adapter right there and you can just put it away. And then you have to attach this adapter to your star tracker like this. And then you have to remove this adapter and then you can attach the ball head to this star tracker like this. So here we go. Like this. And then the only and then the only thing you have to do is attaching your camera. So now your camera is attached to the star tracker. Now you have to simply turn on the uh, the star tracker and then uh, you can already start taking images of the night sky. So it's very, very easy, definitely. And then you can just um, move the camera to the object you would like to capture like this. And then your tracking mount is just tracking the night sky. That's it. that's all. So it's very, very easy, definitely. The only thing that I have to mention in this case is when planning to use a camera like this on this uh, scope, it's very important um, to do the polar alignment process first, because when attaching a camera and this ball head, to the star tracker, you can't look through your polar scope. Therefore, just do the polar alignment process first, and do then align your star tracker to Polaris, and then attach your camera and this entire adapter back again to your star tracker, and then you can just start capturing images of the night sky. Now I would like to show you how you can attach a telescope to the star tracker, for example. Therefore, you have to remove this entire uh, adapter first. Then you need a second adapter, which comes with this star tracker as well, which is this one for this one. You can just simply attach that one to the star tracker once again. Therefore, would like to bring that one in the right position. And then you can simply attach this adapter to your star tracker like this. And then it's already attached to your star tracker. It's moving a bit because I've not um, attached the star tracker correctly to the tripod. But that's not a problem right now because I would like to just simply show you how everything works. Just bring that one in the right position, like this. 
And the, se the second thing that you'll need is a counterweight. And this one, so the Star Tracker comes with a counterweight. So just simply attach that one to your Star Tracker like this. And then the only thing left to do is attaching your telescope right there. So right now my telescope is attached to my bigger tracking mount because I would like to use that one in the next few nights for deep sky astrophotography. But right now you can see um, a video of me um, just using this star tracker with a telescope attached to the star tracker. So definitely you can use a telescope on the star tracker, but if it's windy, don't do that because your, your entire setup will move all the time. For sure that depends on the, uh, the tripod you're using, but generally speaking, I would not recommend using a very big telescope on this star tracker if it's windy. So I've used a telescope with a focal length of 264 millimeters, which is, in my opinion, definitely the limit of this star tracker. So if you're trying to use a bigger telescope on such a star tracker, I would recommend buying a bigger mount because these star trackers are not built for carrying uh, a telescope with a focal length of more than 300 millimeters. For sure, if the conditions are perfect, no wind, it might be possible, but generally speaking, this uh, the Star Tracker has some payload capacity, so a maximum payload capacity of 5 kilograms. So definitely try not to overload this Star Tracker because in the end, images will not be that good. So much said about the Star Tracker. I think I've mentioned everything I've planned to mention. If you have any further questions about this Star Tracker, definitely feel free to ask me down below in the comments and I will definitely helps you. And if you have any general questions about using Star Trek for astrophotography, definitely feel free to ask me down below in the comments and it definitely helps you. If this video was interesting and helpful to you, I would really really appreciate a like and a subscription. Otherwise, thank you so so much for watching and until next time. Clear skies, Felix.